Hey guys, this is Aaron with Stubborn Brothers Brewery. We're here today to talk about glassware and the importance of it with your beer. So the first glass that we're gonna go through is a tulip style glass. You see Russian Imperial Stouts, you'll see English barley wines, you'll see uh, certain Belgian beers, uh, as well as some of your wild ales and some of your fruited style beers, such as you know a raspberry lambic or something along those lines. Uh, so yeah, this is why this glass is probably one of my favorites and it's so utilized in a brew house. With this style, you commonly see a bulbous uh, sidewall and then the top is flared. Uh, the reason that that is, is to capture the aromatics uh, in the glass as well as maintain your head. When, when you have this glass, you're able to swirl it and allow the release of some of those aromatics and the, some of those sensory aspects and you're able to get your schnoz right in there and smell. That's really, really important because then you can actually, you know, participate with the product and you're able to really enjoy it. That's why, you know, this is one of my favorite styles of glasses. Next, we have the beer mug. So the beer mug is commonly seen with the dimpled sides as well as the handle, okay? The handle actually does serve a purpose, is to limit the amount of heat that is transferred to your beer so you can keep it nice and cold and crisp. The styles that are commonly used in this, your English brown ales, your Irish reds, and commonly a lot of those beers that are served in the UK. One of the other really important parts of this glass is that it's commonly used in Czech Pilsners. Uh, when they do a side pour, there's about one to two inches, uh, sorry, one to two ounces of foam that goes in first, and then from there they pour the beer into it, and that comes out to about 19 ounces. But in reality, you're getting approximately 16 to 16 and a half ounces of fluid beer with the head uh, going down over time and, you know, limiting that. So kind of a cool fact about this style of, of glass. Next, we have the good old fashioned American pint glass. This is probably the most utilitarian glass out there. Uh, if you are at any bar or restaurant, you more than likely have seen this glass. It is a 16 ounce pour and it is just really strong and sturdy and uh, it's also really really cheap if I'm gonna be very honest with you. Um, it's been popularized by some of the macro breweries uh, such as your PBRs, your Miller Lights, etc. It's my probably my least favorite glass to utilize because when you do pour into this glass you have a loss of aroma pretty quickly um, you know because we have such a large area that is you know slanted on its sides we quickly have a loss of those aromatics. Your head is, will stay okay, but it's not gonna stay great. You know, it's really not the best uh, item for breweries, and it's mainly meant as something that maybe you can drink uh, a macro lager in or something along those lines, you know. I'm sure we all have our favorite brand, PBR, Miller Lite, whatever, just a macro style beer that is out there, so yeah. Next, we have our, our Weizen glass, or you know, for Hefeweizens, or your Dunkelweizens, or any of these other Weizens out there. Uh, a Weizen glass is super attractive. It's a beautiful styled glass. It's commonly thin at the bottom and then bulges at the top. Uh, the reason that this is, is because we wanna make sure that we're doing the same thing. We got the bulbous sides and we got the flared top, and we wanna make sure we're capturing those aromatics that are coming from this style of beer. And where you're able to get some of the bananas, you're able to get some of those clove smells, banana bread, you get that all kind of in that, in that glass. And so as a result, you're able to preserve that head space and uh, you're able to really get a great smell off of that. And on top of that, you'll be able to see the beer clearly through it. And it's just a fantastic glass. Uh, this is honestly one of my favorite styles of beer to make. We use it commonly for our American wheat uh, and uh, yeah, it's utterly fantastic. It's great. Next we have the Pilsner glass. The Pilsner glass is long and slim, uh, but it's taller. It's a lot taller than an American pint glass, okay? This is great because it is able to maintain carbonation as well as retain great beer head. It's going to stay, you know, more crisp longer 
and it's just going to be a great uh, beer glass as well as able to maintain some of those aromatics that you're going to get, some of those multi flavors you're going to get off of that style of beer and maybe some of those more subtle noble hops for certain pilsners. This glass is probably the most commonly utilized in my brewery because pilsners are super popular. So yeah, uh, probably my second favorite glass. Next, oh, I skipped one. But next we have Das Boot. Uh, das Boot, a lot of people don't know the story of the boot. It really came into popularity probably due to the movie Beer Fest in 2005-ish, and that really kind of promoted it. Other than that, a Prussian general promised his troops to rally them that if they won, he would drink beer out of his boot. At the time, he had a leather boot. Uh, luckily, they did win, and he did not want to drink uh, beer out of a leather gross foot boot, so he uh, commissioned a glass um, maker to basically make him a glass boot, and so he did keep his promise, but he drank it out of glass boot versus his own boot. So that's the, that's the whole folklore behind it. Uh, some actually trace it back to England and British for riding clubs and that they actually were used in that fashion. I'm not really a historian on that aspect, so it has been further popularized with Oktoberfests and is great for many styles of German beer that are out there that a lot of people really, really enjoy, such as your Vienna lagers and other things as well. Sold commonly in uh, half a liter, liter, two liter, they just keep getting bigger and bigger these days. So, you know, very cool boot, very cool glass. I love it. Last but not least, uh, we have our Stein, originally called Steinkrugs. Uh, I believe it's, I hope I'm saying that right. I probably should like Google that. So back in the day, um, where, around the times of the bubonic plague, where they were trying to limit things that could get into their beer. Uh, they were originally made out of ceramic as well as pewter, and they would have a, tap, a top on them that would really limit anything that would get into the beer. And so that's why if you see some of these older steins, right, they have a little top on them with a little handle they push to drink. Nowadays, we do them in glass commonly if they're served at a bar, as we don't use a lot of ceramic, and we don't use beers with tops or beer glasses with tops on them. Um, and yeah, they are sold commonly in one liters or two liters or, uh, or half a liter, same thing. And you know, they're just a great glass for drinking lots of beer in. Like I said, they also utilize them in German Oktoberfests and other parties like that. We commonly will sell our Oktoberfest beer in Steins just because it's fun, it seems authentic, and uh, customers like it. Yeah. Well, that's all I got right now for glassware. I'm sure we'll discuss more. Uh, you know, I'd love to talk about stout glasses and other things, but we don't currently utilize all of that glassware. And uh, yeah, so when that time comes, we can discuss that. So, cheers.